We are sharing from James 4. If you can go with me. Uh, that's a day word, a prophetic word for this week and for today. And I really believe God wants to speak to us. As from verse 1. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? And I'm starting with that point. You can write down. Point number one is battles. The battles. My brother, my sister, the battles, the fighting in my heart. What is the battles inside here? Many times I can be very quickly irritated, frustrated with people, with circumstances. And when I see that in my life, with circumstances and people around me, I must just know it's because there's some battle inside here that's not supposed to be there. And I need to deal with this thing. The quarrels, the fights, this apostle speaks to the church. He says that they, all these fights and quarrels among you is because there's battles inside of you that is not from God. And so... You can have a battle with yourself. You can have a battle about rejection, a battle about for, forgiving yourself. We can have battles with other people because you feel offended. You feel this was wrong, that was right. I'm right, he's wrong. But if a little bit of circumstance or relationships that's not always accurate can throw me off so much, then there's battles inside where I'm destroying, I'm... I'm, I'm busy with losing a lot of energy and I'm destroying something in here that's supposed to be beautiful. Today you can find the Jews, you can find Jews and you can find German guys and they sit with one another thinking, what were we thinking? How can it be? Millions and millions of people that, that slaughtered one another in World War I and II Today that will sit and say, for what? What was it all about, this battle? And even today, how many millions, Ukrainians and Russians asking, why? For what? Now my brother, my sister, for that battles many times in our hearts. For what? Why do you keep that issue with that person? Why do you have that battle with yourself? Why those battles are going on and on and on? I need to deal with a battle. Are you with me? We need to deal with a battle. Because we can, so many beautiful, even now, if you think of so many families in Ukraine and Russia, destroyed, so many beauty in families and in people's lives, destroyed. Why? Don't destroy the beauty that is inside of you because of allowing battles that's not supposed to be there. So the first point, battle. James 4 verse 1, verse 2. You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Motives. Motives. A lot of motives yeah, can cause a lot of battles. There can be a motive in here that somebody must acknowledge that that, that person hurt me. That person must first say sorry before I will really forgive. That person must first change before I will open up my heart for certain things to happen again. No, that's manipulating. That's manipulating. In my motive, I must be led by the Holy Spirit. In my motive, I must be driven by His love, led by His peace, with His joy as my strength. Amen. 
And so sometimes God would want to purify my motives, and that's not sometimes a very good experience, because then things are exposed. And so even I can, I can pray, like we said in the first service, I can pray and I have faith that this, I have a desire that this water must become vodka. So, um, so my faith is out there, but, but my prayer is into a motive with this, because I'm fed up with life, I want, I need this now. So I need this now, my motive is wrong, what I pray for is not right. And I can pray and I can get my list of hundred scriptures of ask and it will be given, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened, you know, and I must have faith. When I have faith, it will happen. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. And, and I can have a hundred scriptures for my prayer that this water will become vodka. And I can know all the scriptures. I can confess all the scriptures. I can believe all the scriptures. I will not receive. Because he says, you ask with wrong motive to spend what you would receive in a wrong way. So what a major waste of a prayer life. <laughs> what a waste of a confession with the scriptures and everything. So God must help us, my brother, my sister, so that sometimes when we get discouraged in, in praying, in believing and trusting for certain things to happen, it doesn't happen because God protects you against your prayer. Because what you're praying for is going to destroy you. But let's don't waste our lives in prayer. But if we then pray, let's pray according to his word. Let's get into his word. Hello. Let's purify the motive. And let's see, God, give me a pure motivation. That what is motivating you, let that also be the motivation for me. What will motivate God in this situation that you need to face tomorrow? Okay, God, I want the same motivation. The passion that you have for tomorrow, for the challenges that we will face tomorrow. That passion, I want that passion, Lord. When I have to meet up with this parent or with this person or this student or with this Boss, well, this guy that you need to fire, ish. God, give me the right motive. And that person will not be fired because I'm fed up. Because you have something else for that person in, at this stage of his life. May God help you that your motives will be pure, pure and become pure. Amen. That is verse 2 and 3. Verse 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity, enmity with, against God? So therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world will become an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that the, he jealously longs for the Spirit he has caused to dwell in us? God is a jealous God. The word here I want to, you to write down is commitment. There's a commitment that you have to be faithful. Will you be, commi be committed to your battle and your motive that is wrong? Oh, people can be, can be committed in that way. These guys that are committed to, to a certain war, because they have a certain motive, they are totally deceived in certain facets. And that they will slaughter, if it's kids, if it's babies, if it's old people, if it's whoever, in whatever way, they can be slaughtered because they can justify the battle. They can justify the battle with a totally deceived motive. And they are committed to the cause. Now, if the enemy can do such an amazing job, just think what the Holy Spirit can do when we are committed to the cause that God has in his kingdom for the nations. And I'm involved with that in the right way. And your battle is not against flesh and blood. And you understand what you must deal with in your life tomorrow. May God help you. God is a jealous God. Because he wants to own you. 
He's jealous that it will be you and him alone. In the sense of that you will not throw your heart out for, and flirt with other things around you. That what is flesh. So he's not, oh, I must do this, otherwise I'm in trouble. No. It has to do with the intensity of his love. So it's you, it's, you cannot put half of your heart with that lady, with that guy, with that situation, with that thing. It's everything to him. Because he, the quality of love that he wants from you is the quality of love that he has given you. He gave everything on the cross. He gave everything. Doesn't matter what I, what you did wrong. He gave everything. And that quality love, he wants you to love him back with that quality love. He first has given you that love. And then he asks you to love him back with that love that he has given you. But that's a certain type of love. And if you don't know, if you can't, don't come to learn what that love is all about, you will not know how to love him. You will not know how to love others. You will not be able to love yourself. It's impossible. But God is a jealous love, a je jealous God. Because he has a certain type of love for you. That jealousy has to do with a certain type of love that is unique, precious between you and him. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. No cheap love. Friendship with, with the world. Will he the world be your enemy? Or will he be your friend? I don't say you need to go out there in a demon of religion and, and judge others. No. No. But if there's not sometimes in your life times that you must make a choice and realize this music, not good. This movie, not good. This type of talk, no. I, I, I cannot go on. I don't, cannot have this. Then you're not standing with God. If there's never that type of places that you come into, if you, there's never that type of choices that you need to make in your life. Oh, you made it 20 years ago. All right. Great. For 20 years you didn't grow. Because if you need to grow, you need to grow out of flesh into more of Him. Out of that what is dark into that what is light. Hello? And for that it means you will take new ground for God. Ground that belonged to the enemy. Then you all face enemy. And it, but the, the enemy come like a, like a like an angel of light. He, he comes, the thief comes like an angel of light. He's not stupid, man. Okay. Something that looks very good, but at the end of the day it wasn't good. The end is not good. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I don't know if anybody heard that scripture before, Emil. Oh, maybe. <laughs> there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end is destruction. And that way that seems right unto a man means when you look at it, everything looks fine. It looks like, yes, it looks like, right, this is the thing. But stay committed to God, his guidance, his love for you. Because the enemy would want to destroy you. He want, would want to destroy the excellence that God has placed in your spirit. But he cannot. He cannot. And stand with that truth. Stand with that truth and don't mess up. You'll go to heaven, but don't mess up your life on earth. Why? Why would you? Let's make pure the commitment towards God. So that our, mo our motives will be right. Are you with me? Are you with me? I could have desires and motives that's in the wrong direction. But I make a certain commitment to God. Ah, it doesn't work. Yeah, how many times did you say, God, I put my trust in you and I will do this and I will do this and I will do this. And it didn't work. When you see again, then you're in anxiety and negativity and stress and, and all this other stuff. And how many times did you say, God, I believe in you. I trust. I take your peace. I take your guidance. I take your protection. I thank you for that. Your love drives out all fear. And when you see, then you're back into this other rubbish. 
our fear and anxiety and whatever. No, in Jesus' name. You just keep on. You just keeping on keeping on. Hello? Are you with me? And you stand with commitment and God will make a way. God will open up the door. Oh, come on. Right. That's James 4, verse 4 and 5. Next one. When we look at verse 6. But he gives us more grace. That is why. That is why. That is why God says. The scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Shows grace to the humble. Opposes the proud. The one that is running in a place where he is first of all a friend of himself and his flesh and what he would want to do. He's walking in pride. He's walking in pride. Pride is not superiority just. Pride is the focus on myself. So I feel like a worm. Oh, poor me. I never get it right. I don't get it right. I'm always in trouble. That's pride. Oh, it doesn't look like pride. It has to do with the self-focus. Not focusing on God and then find yourself in Him, but focusing on yourself and then God must make sense when I look at myself. No. I will make sense when I look at God. My life can make sense when I look at Him. But if I just look at myself, it will make no sense. It cannot make sense. It will not make sense. Are you with me? Now in this, I say present, position yourself. Sorry. Position yourself. It was the battles, the motives, the commitments. Now here you're positioning. Where do you position yourself in your situation? You are first in the battle? No. You are first in Christ. Are you first in, in the motive that's wrong? No. You are first in Christ. Are you first? No, no, no. You're not first in your flesh. Where do you bring your life to? Let's read. God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humility. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. No, four sub points. Point four is position yourself. 4.1 is humility. Humble yourself. Now humble yourself. The next point says submit to God. Now what's the difference between humble yourself and submit? The devils can submit, but they will not humble themselves. They are humiliated. They are humiliated and they submit. But in your submission there's beauty because there's worship. True humility is the place where I stand in awe of who he is. I'm arrested, I'm amazed by his grace, his forgiveness, his love for me. How he believes in me, how he, he really loves me. And in that place there's humility where I bow before him in worship. And from that place I submit. Hello? Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But now the, there's a flirting with the devil. There's, certain uh, situations can floor me. This is not right and I'm totally stressed out. Just like this then I can feel irritated. Not you guys, but in the past. Let's say just in the past. Hey. Good. A lot of things could happen. But you know, how is it possible for me not to have these battles against the devil and that I must the whole time resist the devil? If, first of all, I don't submit to God because I must, like the devil must submit to God because he must. It's just what he, there's no other option. It's because before I submit to God and then resist the devil, I put myself in a place, I position myself in a place of humility in worship before my Lord. And I humble myself, not because I must, because I love him, because I adore him, because I, I ask him to show me who he is. I look into his word and I see the beauty of who he is. I look into life and I ask Holy Spirit, open my eyes to the beauty of life. 
And if from a place of beauty, from a place of coming to know who he is, from that place I humble myself, that's a total different ball game. When after that I say, I submit to God, I submit to his word, and I resist the devil, the devil will flee from me and I will come closer to God. That's your positioning. But my brother, my sister, you can position yourself in performance. You can position yourself because I must do this and I'm not allowed to do this and I must do that. But you know, you're coming to God. You're resisting of the devil. You're submitting to God's principles. It's always going to be a struggle. It will always be a struggle. Unless I will start in my positioning. Start from the place of, God, I want to worship you. And if your flesh says, no, you don't want to worship me. Oh, and all these desires, that's flesh. I need, to sub I need to crucify it, and I need to make the sacrifice of just going for the word. That's rubbish. There's a desire in your flesh, yes, to do what you want to do. You have desires in your flesh to do a lot of rubbish. And there's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of arguing. There's a lot of things that can work in your flesh. That's a desire in your flesh. But you know, you are not first of all your flesh. You are a spirit. But in your spirit, there's a longing. There's a desire to know God. There's a longing and a desire to see the beauty of life and to embrace it through God's word. So it's not... I need to lay down the desires and sacrifice and just give myself, even though I don't want to, I, and give myself to read the word, and I even don't want to, but I will give myself to pray and give myself not to do all these rubbish. No. You're just turning to the real, 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 real desire of the real, real, real you. That's beautiful where there's excellence, where there's quality. And there's excellence and quality in your spirit, and the desire of your spirit is to have intimacy with God and to know the Word and to eat the Word and to be with the Word and to enjoy the Word, not just read the Word. I, to come into the place and say, God, help me to enjoy the Word. Help me to enjoy the Word. Amen. That type of positioning before God, with that type of humility, that type of submitting, that type of resisting the devil, in that way, coming to God, there's quality. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's not like God is gone. No, he's here. Like he's here. Let's say this is your life with all the situations and there you are. God is also here. But when God sees you are reaching out to him, immediately he will come. You know, we can all be here. We have some lack of fellowship. Everybody is here, and I'm here, and John Dre is here. <sighs> Hello. And I'm here with John Dre because we are here. And when he would reach out, it's like when he would reach out, and I see he's reaching out, he may, gave two or three steps, and I go to him. That is the context of like. God is here, and he sees in the midst of everything where you are, and with whoever you are, that when you're looking at him, and you start to reach out to him, when you draw nearer to him, he will draw near to you. He, his eyes are on you, and attentive to the moment that you are reaching out to come closer to him, he will come closer to you. Are you with me? That is to position yourself. Number five, present yourself. Present yourself. How do you present yourself? You know, how do you present yourself? Okay, I'm coming closer, and you are, uh, let's say you are the bride, and the bridegroom is there in front, and you, here comes the bride, you know. Uh, you know the song. Okay. You haven't sing it yet. Okay. Good. Here comes the bride. You know, the bride is coming in with a sting and I'm <coughs> she's eating a chewing gum and hi, hey, hey, on the way to the front, you know, and, and some clothes not even fully dressed and a lot of marks. She looked like she fell in the mud and 
he's chilling and stopping halfway. Hey, hey, how are you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. And the bridegroom is there in front. What would you think of the bride? She's not just crazy. She's just not just chesed. What what happened to her? Hello? But me and you? How will you present yourself as the bride to the bridegroom, as the child to the father, as the servant to the master, as the temple to the Holy Spirit to come and dwell? How will you present yourself? The rest of that scripture. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, wail, change your laughter into mourning, and your joy into gloom. What is it saying? Wash your hands, first of all. You are being washed by the blood of the Lamb. But your hands, that's what you do. We see also the bridegroom, Ephesians 5. Jesus saying, he has washed his bride, his church, with the washing of the word. So when you get into the word, it's so that your hands, your dealings, your work, your doing can become clean. Can become clean. Are you with me? So um, trust God that you will be able to do that. That your hands can become clean in the work that you do. That your work will have everlasting impact. There will be quality in your work. It can be good. It can be, it can be not just being productive, but there's not, no poison in what you do that it can destroy other people's lives. But the job, the, the business, the, what you are busy with will complement, will support others, will be in line for the building, what God is doing in his kingdom. Ah, no. But I can work with demons. I can work with my flesh. I will work with God. But I will work. My hands will work with somebody. You will work. You will not work alone. You will work with your filthy flesh. You will work with the devil. You will work with God. Who will it be? But if you want to work with God, there's certain protocol. There's certain respect that need to be in place. So for that, the blood is there. Let him wash you clean and then apply the word to your dealings. Apply the word to your work, the word to your studies. Wash your hands, you sinners. That's those who miss it. You miss it all the way. But when your hands are washed with the word, you will not miss it every time. You will become accurate in what you must do. Accurate. Accurate. You sinners means the ones that miss it all the time. You miss what God has for you. You miss his perfect will. You miss the destiny that God has for you. You miss the dream. You miss the blessing. You miss the, the, the surprise that he had for you today. You don't have to miss it. But then, in your dealings with your hands, let it be washed by the word. Amen. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You double-hearted and double-minded. When my mind and my heart is in, in two places. Oh, let the cracks in your heart, the cracks eh, in your mind. And when it's really a time of pressing through, then suddenly through these cracks, there's some rubbish coming through there, some cockroaches and rubbish, hamors coming through the the crack. No, I need to have wisdom to deal with that before the time. Are you with me? There cannot be a crack in the foundation then. So now when there's time, now when it seems not a priority, it doesn't have to be a priority to get into the word. It doesn't seem to be this major priority. It's a principle, it's good. Yeah, we're supposed to and it's good to spend really time in the word and to Push into the word so that you start to enjoy the word and long to, to, to be, uh, what's the word? Overwhelmed by the word. That the word is all over you. Hello? It's not really priority. No. There's a crack, but it's not really priority. But you know, one day when there's a 10-story building, it, the thing can fall in and so many can be destroyed. Don't destroy your future. Don't destroy your destiny. 
by not dealing with the cracks today. You're with me? Purify the hearts. Purify. And purify the hearts is so that you deal with the double-mindedness. Then, he says, go into depression. Become negative. Moan, groan. Is that what he says? Grieve, mourn, and wait. Change your laughter into mourning and your joy to gloom. No, that's not what he says. He's not saying get depressed and feel totally negative and whatever and miserable. He says, come with brokenness. Let there be true brokenness when you are sorry. Let it not be a cheap word. Let it not be a cheap word to say sorry. Oh, I was in trouble. Sorry. And some use it just as a cop-out to get forgiven and not to be in trouble. Some go into a shame where there's a shame on your life. But in true repentance, there's true brokenness. And brokenness can be beautiful. In brokenness, God is near the brokenhearted. The scripture says God is near the brokenhearted. And if you can present yourself with your dealings, your hands washed through the blood and the word, and your heart purified through the Holy Spirit and the word. And then thirdly, that you come and there's not a cheap sorry. There's not a cheap repentance. But there's a true brokenness in you. Because you want to have this intimacy with God. That can only come from a place of brokenness. Hello? So that number four, you will bring your everything before the Lord. You will bring your everything before the Lord. It's not just quickly dump it there in a short prayer. I don't say you must have long prayers. I'm saying in some other prayer that you know, this is a type of prayer that you, you're supposed to pray. And you pray what you're supposed to pray, but actually you just dump it there. There's no respect in that. There's no respect in that repentance. If you respect God, there will be a certain form of repentance. There will be a certain form of making right. For the sake of what? Not to be in the wrong anymore. No, you don't make right so that you're not wrong anymore. You make right because you want to have intimacy with God. You make right because you want a different lifestyle. You make right because you love Him, because you want to see Him, you want to walk with Him, you want to work with Him, you want to enjoy Him. Hello? That's why you make right. You don't make right because you are wrong. And you don't want to be wrong anymore. It's so much more than just that. You with me? May God purify the motives in us. May He purify the motives. My brother, my sister, so then the, the, the wall can stop inside. Then you can really deal with the flesh in a more accurate way. That's number five. Number six. He says there, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother and a sister or judges them, speak against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? There's only one that is able to save. It's about if you want to talk about judging, no. But honor and respect others. You can only do that if you honor and respect what God has given you. But I flirt with the darkness because I don't respect what God has given me. If you would respect what God has given you, you know, you will deal with your life in a certain way. But I can speak against others and I can have this issue with others and I can point the finger, this is not right and the church is doing this right and that, not that wrong. And I can easily point a finger. First of all, when I don't come from a place of humility where I submitted to God and resisted the devil, when I didn't come from a place of washing the hands with my dealings, purifying my heart, coming in brokenness before the Lord. But if all that is true, I will know how to respect the life God has given me and the life God has given others. And I will not just speak. I will not just say. Somebody who really have respect for life and for themselves and others. 
they're not so easily opinionated, so easily irritated, so easily frustrated, so easily take offense, so easily uh, pick a fight and have a battle and a thing with somebody in their mind or in their heart. Let's go into that place. Hmm? More and more, the church, for the church, there's no time to sort out issues. We need to deal with the issues and make sure that there's not issues. We need to come into a lifestyle where we are not so open to have issues. Hello? If I'm securing Christ, if they would, would spit me in the eye, don't you dare try. I, I'm supposed to, if I'm more secure in Christ, I will not take the rejection and the this and the that and the that. And I will think, what happened in his life? Or what is, what is happening in him that he would do that? Why is he doing that? There's something God would want to address in his life. Are, are you with me? Is he Uh, the, a long time ago, not now, there was this one guy, he had a hell of an issue with, was it Acking Cliff, that he walked around with a knife. I can't remember. Peter Yekinoloni, you were much too young then. <laughs> uh, they had, uh, praise God for his protection. But this guy later, when he really repented, we heard that he walked around with a knife, he wanted to do something against us. Yeah, more inspections in the student houses. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what I'm just saying, what a, what a waste of time, what a waste of a life. Hello? If we must always carry the issue, always carry the knife ready to do something against somebody in my head, in my emotions, in my heart, I always uh, I'm, I'm ready with a knife. For what? For what? You have this one life on earth. Tell your neighbor, for what? Now say it with a better attitude. Okay. My brother, my sister, if you can respect yourself in Christ, you can respect others. So when you have all these issues quickly with others, and you have opinion about others, and you want to uh, deal with some stuff with others, first deal with yourself. First deal with yourself. I want to say get over yourself. <laughs> like they would say out there. Get over yourself with some stuff. And relationships will be so much easier. You know, if everybody can just see it the way I see it. Wonderful, yeah. But that's a lack of full of pride. But God will set us free. Amen? All right, number seven. Dependency for destiny. Everybody say, dependency for destiny. We can say, no. Oh, you must study, then you can have a future. Yes, you must be faithful. You have the development. Yes. You have the gifts. Yes. You have the intellect. Yes. You can, you can do certain things. You have certain skills. Yes. You have some dreams. You have some strategies. Yes. But you know, there's one ingredient, dependency. That better be in you for your destiny. Otherwise, destiny is gone. Last, last part of uh, James 4, verse 13. Now listen. Now listen. You say, you say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or to that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Did they say we're going to steal, we're going to rob, we're going to cheat, we're going to... No. Guys with an excellent vision. They have the capacity, they have the ability, they have the intellect, they have the, how do they say, the savvy up here. They have it. And they say, let us go and do this. You say that. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, Instead, you ought to say, everybody say, say, say. About your destiny and dependency, this apostle is tuning the church about what they are saying about tomorrow. 
if it is the Lord's will, we will live and also, and we will do this or we will do that. Is it you? It is you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. No, they didn't say, oh, you're going to be the king of the country, you know. We're going to do this, we're going to do this for me, for me, for me. But just the fact that they didn't say in the conversations, if God wills, and God is giving us the life tomorrow, then we will. Just because they didn't say it, he says, there's some arrogant boasting. I challenge myself, I challenge you, and say, let's change in how we talk strategy, in how we talk about tomorrow, how we talk about the 40 guys coming, how we talk about what we're going to do on the farm, how what we talk about, you, you talk about your kids and your future and your house and your car and your whatever, whatever is laying it. Say, sorry, Lord. Arrogant boasting. By these guys, they didn't swear. They didn't put all these bad strategies on the table. Normal, normal strategies. But they didn't. They didn't say. There's certain sentences not in their vocabulary. Hello, are you focusing? There's certain words that we must put back in our sentences. So that we can understand with our words to direct our hearts for a life dependent on God. That we know it's just a privilege to have a future. It's just a privilege to have an awesome destiny. It's just a privilege to have hope. It's a privilege to have hope for the future. But your hope is found in Christ. But if you never mention the hope in Christ. If the hope in Christ is never mentioned in the hope that you have for your future. It's arrogant boasting. It's not what they did. It's what they said about their future. That the apostle tunes them. And say the way that you speak. Arrogant boasting. Dependency for destiny. Let's try that again. Dependency for destiny. Okay. And the last one after the seven points. Verse 17. If anyone then, so, in conclusion, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. If you know what is the good that you're supposed to do. Now, first of all, it's saying you are supposed to know what is the good that you're supposed to do. <clears throat> are you with me? Make sure you know what's the good works that God has prepared for you to do. You ought to know, you're supposed to know, what God has given you to do for this season ahead, for this week ahead, for this day ahead, for tomorrow. If you then know it and you don't do it, it's called sin. It's called somebody walking an inaccurate life. It's called somebody missing life, missing God's will, missing the best, missing a life that has eternal value. It's somebody missing it all the way. It's called sin. Somebody missing it all the way. We have a picture of sin. But it's not necessarily right. The right picture. Sin is all this bad stuff. Sin is missing the excellent life that God has for you tomorrow. See, if you don't know, if you, you're supposed to know what to do tomorrow, and when you know it, you better do it. Otherwise, you will always miss out on an excellent, excellent life and a future with God. Thank you, Father. You're going to help us. God, we trust you for that. God, you have an excellent future for us. But God, I pray for every man, every woman in this place that we will make that decision to be dependent on you. Forgive us in our, in our speaking, Lord, that so many times you were not honored in our conversations. You were not honored in our speaking, in our sentences, in, in what we talk about, Lord. Forgive us for that, Lord. 
God, but that we will not say just as Christian jargon, we will not just say some few Christianese words. God, but we will, we will say it, but we, it will come from our hearts. It will come from our hearts, Lord. We choose to be dependent for our destiny in you. Forgive us for not honoring and respecting the excellent life that you have given us in our spirit. And also for others that we will honor them, we will honor our lives and not just point the finger. Forgive us for that arrogance, Lord. But we will present ourselves through the blood of Christ in the washing of hands and, and purifying of hearts through your word. We choose together as a unity to get into your word so that we can be purified and be washed clean so that we will come with a genuine brokenness not with fake repentance lord but with genuine brokenness to you not to get out of the wrong into the right but to have a life where we can come close to you and live and work and be with you lord that's our desire. That's how we want to present ourselves. As first of all, yes, we position ourselves with true humility. Do it through your grace, Holy Spirit, in our lives. That our humility, our submission, will be because of your beauty. Will be because of a longing and a desire for more of you, less of us. And from that place, thank you, Lord, that you dealt with the devil. Therefore, in our submission to you, we will see how the devil will flee. And our resisting is only because of reminding the devil what you have done and believing what you have done against the devil. Thank you for that, Father, that you come and do that in Jesus' name. And we declare that our commitment will be pure towards you. Our motives will be we have one desire. This is our desire, to honor you, this is our longing to come to know you, for that is eternal life, Lord. Forgive us for the battles. Forgive us for all the fighting in the hearts and with people and the quarrels in our hearts, with people and, and issues. Forgive us for that issues and irritations, Lord. We choose your peace. And we know that the true battle belongs to you because we respect you as the Lord. And we thank you that you, we can walk into this excellent destiny. I pray that for each one here in the name of Jesus and that name alone. And all say, Amen. Amen.